hi to everyone, especially to those of you who are in flame and tribe. Uh, we want you to know that we love you and we've missed you. We loved seeing lots of you at the Christmas Zoom party just before Christmas. Um, and this next part of the online service is for you guys. So if you possibly can, come and just sit and listen to this bit, uh, because I think that God wants to speak to you and to help you and to come near to you today. So we're on our final stretch of these online services and we're now at a time in this pandemic which is quite dark and um, and, and quite sad and um, particularly in London the virus has spread very rapidly and so today we want to lift up our eyes away from this and up to the God of heaven who answers prayers and we want to look at people who have who have seen God answer their prayers people in the Bible people among us other people um, we want to lift up our eyes to this God who answers prayers and one of my favorite quotes about prayer um, is from this man an American uh, revivalist called Billy Sunday who lived about 150 years ago and he said this amazing thing he said if you are a stranger to prayer you are a stranger to the greatest source of power known to human beings. And I think that is just the most wonderful, um, inspiring thought, that prayer is the greatest source of power known to human beings. And it makes me want to pray when I think about that. Um, and over the next few weeks, we're going to look at a new story, a story of someone not from the Bible, but a story of someone who lived about, 100, about 120 years ago. Um, and her name was Gladys Aylward, and her life uh, was marked by, by her. Uh, she had found this source, this greatest source of power. So amazingly, like many of you, this woman, Gladys Aylward, uh, was born in North London, not far from where many of us live. She grew up on an ordinary North London street. She was born in 1902, which was uh, the year after Queen Victoria died. Her family didn't have very much money and in those days there were very few opportunities for poorer children, particularly girls who they didn't think were as important as boys. So she left school at 12 um, and she began work as a parlour maid, really as a servant in a house where she worked for eight years. Um, she would have scrubbed floors and swept fireplaces and helped with washing and cleaning and cooking. Uh, she would have just helped around the house. And this is a picture not of Gladys Aylward, but of a, a London maid at that time. This is the kind of uniform she would have worn. But where did she stand as far as God was concerned? So she had been brought up in a Christian home, again, like many of you. She'd gone to Sunday school and church. So if she'd been at New Life Church, she would have gone to Flame and then on to, into Tribe and then into a blaze. But as an older teenager, she decided to turn away from God. And she said to her parents, I, I, I don't think I'm ever going to go to a church again. I'm just going to go off and do my own thing. And she planned to um, save up her extra money and go to drama classes somewhere in London. And she said to them, I want to become an actress. But there was a serious backdrop to her life. When she was a teenager, there were two huge things that had happened. First, she grew up at the, at the time of the First World War. So that was all happening. And then straight after the First World War, there was a pandemic, very like our pandemic now, but it was much, much worse. Um, and there were very few um, treatments, these amazing um, treatments that they're able to give people now. They couldn't give them in those days. Um, and she and her family had lived through these things. And at the end of that time, after the war and after the pandemic, there came a time a hundred years ago called the the Roaring Twenties. And it was a time when many people turned away from God, a bit like Gladys Aylward was doing. But interestingly enough, it was also a time when people turned towards God because it was a time of revival. There was a huge and extraordinary revival known as the Pentecostal Revival, which went on for several decades and really started in 1904 in Wales and then spilled on out across the world. And it ultimately led to many millions, millions becoming Christians, many who had never even heard of Jesus before. And there's a picture here of that revival. Uh, this is a picture from the 1920s of a man preaching. I don't know if you can see him there. And he's got a guy behind him playing on the organ. And those men standing around him are not Christians. Those are men outside a factory who've just come out from work and they're crowding round to hear the amazing messages that this man called Jock Troop was preaching. And this revival that was spreading around the place spilled out onto London streets in the 1920s. And Gladys Aylward, this 
19-year-old who decided that God wasn't for her, um, was going along the street and she said she was just swept up into a group of young people, teenagers who were inviting people saying, come on, there's revival meetings happening in our church. Come, come to the meeting. And she said she had no idea why she agreed to go since she just told her family that she wasn't ever going to church again. But she went to the meeting that day. And she said afterwards these amazing words in that church. I found Jesus Christ. What an incredible thing to say. She hadn't found a doctrine or a theory or some information. She'd found a person, a living being, and he had come into her heart and into her life. And her life was touched by the fire of the Holy Spirit and she offered her her future to God. She didn't want to be an actress anymore. She decided she wanted to do something for God. And there were amazing and huge revival meetings taking place in London and other parts of the country at that time. Here's a picture of one of them. Um, and she went to these meetings and her own heart was so moved and she heard about the great missionary moves um, and particularly about China and about what Hudson Taylor had done um, in, in the century before. And she decided in her heart, I want to go to China. I want to do something for God. So she told her father one day in the kitchen, she said to him, I'm going to go to China to work for God. And he said, what are you going to do in China? He said, you're not a nurse or a doctor. You're not a teacher. The only thing you're good at is talking. And after he'd said those things to her, she went out of the kitchen, she shut the door and she said she stood in the narrow passageway by the stairs and she wept because she thought, I want to go to China, but I've got nothing to do. And then she remembered what her father had said. All you're good at doing is talking. So she said to God, I want to go to China and I want to talk and talk and talk about Jesus. And she said from that point onwards, words and thoughts began to come into her mind and she was able to speak as she'd never done before about Jesus to other people. So she applied to go to China with the China Inland Mission, the famous organisation that Hudson Taylor had set up. And she went to their college because they accepted women as well as men, which was quite unusual. And she went there and she studied the language for three months. And at the end of the three months, they called her in and the principal said to her, it's no good, Gladys. It's not going to work. You haven't made any progress with the language. And if you can't get the language, you just can't go out to China. And so she looked at them and she said to them, and I think she was smiling when she said it. She said, I want to really thank you for how kind you've been to me here. And I'm sorry that I haven't really been able to learn very much. But I have learned something. I've learned to pray to really pray. That's something I'll always be grateful for. Have we learned to pray? To really pray like she had? See, she knew she got was getting close to this greatest source of power known to mankind. She knew that God was hearing her prayers to go to China. And as she turned to leave, they said to Walt, Miss Aylwood, um, there's a couple of very elderly missionaries who live in Bristol and um, they're retired and they need help. They need a housekeeper. Would you consider going to stay with them and live with them uh, for a while and look after them? And she said, yes, I'll go. It was part of God's plan because they taught us so much about missionary life, even though she'd been told you can't go as a missionary. They were called Dr. and Mrs. Fisher. And she said of them, they knew God as their friend not a being far away. It was as though they lived their lives with him. God was preparing her. She later left them and went to work with the church in Swansea down in the docks amongst the really desperate and the very poor. Um, but still in her heart, she felt, I want to go to China. And she began to say to herself, if God wants me to go to China, he'll make a way. And at that time, she began to read the Bible like she'd never done before. And she read about Abraham, how God called him out. And she still felt in her heart, God is calling me out. So she made a decision to go back to London to become a servant again, a maid again, um, and to start to save up to go to China. She's now in her late 20s. So she started her new job in London where she would stay Monday to Friday and then probably go home on the weekends. And on the third day of her new job, she was reading in the morning her Bible before she started work about Nehemiah and how he wanted to go to Jerusalem and how God made a way for him. And she said to herself, he did go. Nehemiah did go to Jerusalem, even though he thought he couldn't. And so she knelt down by her bed that day in that house. And she said, Lord, I've got here on my bedside table 
two and a half pence. That's about a pound in our money. I've got my Bible. I've got my daily light, which was Bible reading notes. It's not very much, Lord, but I have you. Please, could you help me to go to China? What a great and simple prayer. And literally as she finished her prayer, her, her friend who worked with her uh, came into the room and said, oh, stop the mumbling jumbling, which was what she called Gladys when she prayed. She said, the mistress is calling for you. So she went down to her employer, the woman they worked for, and the woman said, look, I've just suddenly felt I must give you more money. I need to give you money for your travel fares when you go backwards and forwards from Edmonton. And so she gave her three shillings. That's the equivalent of about £6.75 in our money. So Gladys Aylwood took that as a sign from God uh, that he had, he was going to provide for her. She thought, well, I've got, I had two and a half pence. I've now got £6.75. It's a lot more than I had about 10 minutes ago. Next week, we're going to see how God continues to answer that prayer that she prayed. Lord, let me go to China. Let's just pray. Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful story. Uh, we want to know Jesus Christ, who Gladys Aylwood found in that church in 1922. We want to know him too. Uh, we want to know him like that missionary couple, knew him as their friend, a living being in their hearts and in their lives. As we look at this story, Lord, could we get to know you more and more? We so pray and ask that. Amen. Amen.